Hello, it's Jerry Gill from Gill Plumbing and Heating in Bedford, Ohio. And next up on our discussion of air vents is the Moat wafer vent. And you'd look at this and go, what the heck kind of weird looking air vent is this? This is actually a pretty cool design when you think about it. This is basically what's in a radiator trap, a steam trap. So if you think you can't use a steam trap for, for an air vent, well, you're wrong. They, they were doing it, you know, almost a hundred years ago. That is essentially what is in this thing. And um, this is a thermostatic air vent. And the way it works, I'm going to flip it upside down because there's a piece that's going to fall out of here. You can look inside and see the holes, okay, that the, that the air goes through and that steam will also get into. Here's a thermostatic wafer. Okay, this is the same thing that's in a radiator trap. Matter of fact, if you were to get a Dunham radiator trap, it would look darn near identical to this. That's that's a thermostatic wafer. There's a volatile liquid in there. You can see how the holes come in, and steam would be spread out and spread out onto this, and cause that to to flash its internal. Uh, volatile liquid into vapor which will make this thing pop up okay now as it pops up see this piece that uh, is basically looks like a spring sort of a bent piece of metal with a ball on it and it goes it flexes there's the socket it flexes into so it naturally see how it can move I'm pushing on it and it moves it wants because it's spring because the spring is cupped, let's see if we can get a good picture of that being cupped, curved, it's on a curved piece of metal. When that ball is in there, it's trying to stay open. This vent wants to be open. But as the steam comes in, goes through the holes, heats this up, heats the volatile liquid in here in this disc, and the disc expands a little bit and drives this flat surface upward. When it does, it pushes this piece with the ball into the hole and shuts off your air vent. And that's how this wafer vent worked. Now a little interesting part of trivia here is you'll notice on the bottom it says Ideal Heating Equipment Company, Cleveland. On the top it says Moat. My understanding was they were in the same building and Moat would have Ideal make their stuff for them and they private labeled it for Moat. But uh, now here's another thing about this. This could also be a vacuum vent or an atmospheric vent. And the way you would tell is you take this top off and there may be a disc in there. The disc has been removed from here and a disc should be removed unless you have a coal boiler. But you don't know if this is still a vacuum vent or a regular vent unless you've taken the lid off and removed the little piece of sheet metal that would have made it a vacuum vent. If the piece of sheet metal is there, the air can get out because it'll just keep lifting that little piece of sheet metal and the air comes out these perimeter holes. And if and if the sheet metal piece is still in there, when the system drops into a vacuum, it's going to try to suck down that piece of sheet metal which will cover the hole and that's how you got a vacuum vent. Now here again, these outer holes are misleading. You'd look at this and say, this must be a great vent. No, it's actually a very poor vent because there's your little itty bitty hole in the center. You know, little itty bitty hole, that's what you're venting through. Not these big holes around here, which makes it kind of misleading. It's a well-made vent. It's another one of those cases where it's a very well-made vent, but its cubic foot per minute is minuscule. So if you got these on your system, you, <laughs> you may want to install some better vents as far as moving the air because fuel's not cheap anymore. 